Edgar Berlanga finally gets taken the distance and Emmanuel Navarrete is able to defend his WBO featherweight title against Christopher Diaz. Before we begin make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click on the notification bell to be notified whenever I drop a new video. Anyway let's jump right into this. So for the co-main event of the fight Edgar Berlanga finally gets taken the distance and improves his record to 17 wins with 16 knockouts. Nicholson being the veteran was able to drag on the fight until the eighth round and although the fight was one-sided Nicholson finally got some of the rounds that we wanted to see out of Berlanga and answered a few questions for us nevertheless Berlanga's power did carry and was able to punctuate the fight by dropping Nicholson in the last few seconds of the eighth round fortunately Nicholson was able to get back up and finish the fight on his feet ultimately falling to a unanimous decision win for Berlanga on the main event of the evening Emmanuel Lavarrete stops Christopher Diaz with just 11 seconds left of the 12th round and even though this was a one-sided fight it was very entertaining and Christopher Diaz gave us a very special 12th round in fact both men did both guys gave it their all and Navarrete was also able to show off his offensive prowess and the different weapons and tools he possesses as well as his in-ring IQ which a lot of people tend to overlook because of his sloppy style and although Christopher Diaz didn't take the win home he did win the affection of a lot of people as well as the respect from Navarrete Diaz was down a total of four times in the fight one in the fourth round twice in the eighth where he took substantial damage and once more in the 12th round before the fight got called off and one thing that impressed Navarrete was the fact that Diaz kept getting back up and seemed stronger from every knockdown he had endured Navarrete continues to be a threat for anyone in the division and right after the fight he stated that if there's nothing enticing at 126 he is willing to move up to 130 and hopefully make the bigger fights there and that's the thing no matter who you throw Emmanuel in there with I think Vaquero is going to be able to give us some explosive fights because of his style. His style is very odd. He hits you with weird angles, but he always carries that power. And it's obvious with the record of 33 wins, 28 knockouts, and only one defeat. One thing that's pretty interesting as well is his reach. I mean, it's 72 inches long, and he's 5'7", fighting at 126. Even at 130, he's still relatively big, and he also rehydrates pretty well. I think one of the most interesting things that Emmanuel does is the fact that he's able to switch his offense on and off quite easily. So he'll be recovering midway through the round and before you know it, he'll turn around and just unleash a hellacious uppercut or a left hook and you just don't know from what angle it's going to come from. I mean, Diaz was able to give nuances, show different wrinkles to his game, attempt to fight with different strategies, but Navarrete was able to counter every single one of them and his awkwardness and power was ultimately too much for the Puerto Rican title hopeful anyway guys let me know who you want to see Navarrete fight against next what fights are you most interested for him at 126 and whom would you like to see him against at 130 if he is to move up anyway let me know what you guys think leave a like comment and subscribe to the channel like always this is Shea Akimi Boxing signing out